Hello, my name is Matt Nolf. I'm with PNG Technologies out of Michigan. We're a supplier of propane and natural gas kits for generators. Today we're going to be doing an example conversion on a Westinghouse WH10,000DF, which is for dual fuel. This is already propane and gasoline from the factory. Um, what we're going to do is give you an example for the natural gas uh, kit for it. We get a lot of calls on that. And then also with the propane, we're going to do that too because if this regulator ever fails you, there's nowhere for it to be found on the website. I did searching all over for it, um, pulled the numbers off it, and you just can't get nothing. So if it ever fails, you're going to have to replace the system anyway. So we'll go ahead and show you the natural gas, and then we'll show you the propane steps on that, and we'll get started on it. Okay, first we're going to go ahead and start by removing the air cleaner cover and get access to the carburetor we got on here. Go ahead and pull your cover off. Put that to the side, pull your cleaner off. And we're gonna go ahead and remove these six nuts here. It's like a center air foot cover piece too. Go ahead and loosen those up. They make this pretty beefy here. So this is identical, honestly, to the Honda uh, air cleaner box. Okay, we got a couple more here. Okay, one more here. Pull this off here. Okay, now we got access to the two studs here. We'll get to that step next. Okay, before we go ahead and remove our front studs, we got to go ahead and remove the back hoses here. So you'll pull your breather tube out and you just push that to the side. Okay, and then we have one more hose here. That is your vent for your gas tank. Go ahead and pull that back. Set that to the side. All right, and then back here, there's a vibration bracket. So we'll go ahead and get that off there. And then we'll show you the front step on removing it. Now that we got everything removed from the back, we can go ahead and remove our two nuts here holding the back cover on. And then we'll have complete access to the carburetor. Go ahead and set that to the side. And be careful when you pull this apart not to screw your gaskets up. Okay, we've got that off now. You'll just pull your little clip off for your gas line here. All right, we'll show you the next step. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and install our slim adapter here. Okay, now I wanna show you something here. Okay, use your existing gasket here. Our adapter will slide over. Use the gasket we send with you. Now when you put this back on here, you can see that there is just barely, I mean, you can still get a nut on there, which is not a problem. But what I do before I do this, I'll pull this off. Take your gasket, the existing gasket, because you don't want to screw it up. All right, and then I'll get vice grips. Needle nose, don't screw the end of your threads up. Lock down on them, and just turn them babies out. You can even grab them by hand sometimes. Turn them out about, oh, maybe a complete two turns, and then you'll have plenty of meat to be able to grab it. And they go back in there far, so you're not going to do anything to interfere with the stability of this carburetor. So go ahead and back those out. Okay. Put their gasket back on. Get our slim adapter on there. 
pop this back on this gasket. Get this back up there. Okay, now you can see that we've got plenty of room on here to get this back. step there and we'll move to the next one okay now you can see after we got our adapter on here the vibration bracket is pulled it's far away from it so if you just take this loosen this up back here okay you see how that pulled forward and then you can go ahead and get your nut back on there And then we'll tighten that back down after we get this. Okay, now we got that back secure. We'll go ahead and tighten this back down. And that is that step right there. Okay, now that we got our bracket installed down here we'll go ahead and hook our tubes back up got the top breather there everything fits back on it's nice because of that adapter go ahead and slide this on pull that up and then we'll go ahead and get to our next step here okay okay now we'll go ahead and reinstall our center air cleaner box here we can get them all started kind of alter pack you know so we not cranking on one side and distorting it out okay go ahead and put our air cleaner back in here this one here tends to kind of want to come out on you a little bit go ahead and get this back on see how nice that air cleaner's got room you can pee in it you get those thick adapters you can't do nothing so that's that step there okay now we'll go ahead and mount our regulator assembly now this will all come pre uh, assembled for you um, that way you don't got to pipe anything together so we'll go ahead and get that mounted what we're going to do is going to mount it down here on the frame it's the easiest location to give us our closest signal back to our adapter so from the back of the bracket here okay we're going to go ahead and mark back towards the back of the unit an inch and a half okay make a mark there and then we're going to go back and mark an inch and seven eighths okay that'll give our center to center for our regulator mount then we'll go ahead easiest way to do this get you a punch so it doesn't sit there and slide on you the whole time Now, when I drill this, obviously, I'm going to be in a little bit of an angle because I'm going to hit the valve cover here, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get that drill. Okay, 
go straight through it. Okay, we got that one. clean them up and mark our reg or get our regulator mounted. Okay, now that we got our two holes drilled and cleaned up, what was kind of nice about it is even with the little bit of the angle, it kind of pitched the regulator out a little bit to give more clearance for vib vibration for this. So what we're gonna do is go ahead, and we'll supply you the hardware. There's, I got a block washer, two flats on the bottom, and I'll put two on the top. I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Okay, and then we're going to do the same over here. Kind of pull that to the side. Two on the bottom with the lock washer, and then we got two on the top. Go ahead and spin that around and pull it up. Okay, and we'll go ahead and tighten them down. And I just kind of go both sides just to pull it down. Okay, there we go. All right. That tightens that, that's that step. Okay, now our final step before we go ahead and run it, we're gonna go ahead and connect our hose to the tube here. Just go ahead and set that up. Get your clamp over here. Get that marked up. Just make sure you, you can twist it to kind of pull it back a little bit, get your kinks out. Go ahead and tighten this one down. And we'll go ahead and get this one tightened down. And that basically is the entire installation. So we're gonna hook up our natural gas now and we'll go ahead and run this thing. Okay, now before I run this, what I want to show you is because obviously this is a dual fuel setup from the factory. This is their propane regulator here. They don't even tell you that you need a high pressure regulator at your tank to allow this to run. If you just took a, a tank directly to this, it would literally blow the diaphragm in it. And you cannot find these anywhere. There's nowhere to be found on them. I have looked all over to try to see if I could get a replacement for it, and there's nothing for it. So I just kind of wanted to give you aware of that. And then also the question is when people say, well, do I run natural gas, do I switch it to the propane? Because it's kind of like the same fuel. Well, no, you do not. Uh, and the reason why you do not is if you switch to propane, this allows suction on this hose to open this diaphragm and there are uh, bleeder vents in this will allow you to create a vacuum leak for your carburetor. So that will not allow you to run the natural gas. So what you need to do is switch it up to your gasoline and you have a gasoline shutoff valve on the side of this where uh, it's a cockpit on there. You shut it off, run your gasoline completely out of the unit before you try to start it on natural gas. You don't really want to bleed the two fuels together. So I wanted to show you that step because that's a very crucial point in getting this thing to run properly. Okay, now that we've got everything set up, we're ready to run this baby. So what we're going to do is go ahead and hook up our natural gas line. All right, now I definitely recommend three quarter inch ID. Um, I know there's a few companies out there that say that half inch will run it, but I'll tell you with my experience, I, I feel it runs them too lean. Um, so if you go with the three quarter inch, uh, you know you won't have no issues. So now this is your power adjustment. In is lean, out is rich. This is your number one set. This is probably the toughest part of the whole setup. Now what we do is we set it at 15 millimeter from the top of the nut to the end of the jam. And then what we'll do is it should give us a good start here. So let's go ahead, turn our natural gas on. Okay, and again, make sure all your gas is ran out. Make sure you're set on your gasoline. And let's go try this. Hit your primer button in the back of this unit. Give it a shot of fuel. Oh, 
Touch your natural gas on, off, and then we'll go ahead and lock this down. Okay, that concludes our natural gas setup for our Westinghouse 10,000. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to bypass their propane system, you can get the propane kit from us also. It'll come with your high pressure regulator and everything, and you'll just hook it right up to here versus your natural gas feed. Now, on the natural gas side, we do offer the quick connects for three quarter, which is very important to have a true orifice three quarter inch quick connect. Uh, a lot of other ones that are being sold are orificed and it causes them to run too lean. So if you're interested in purchasing this kit from us, you can go to pngtechnologies.com or we could be reached at 734-992-2648. And thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this helps out. Have a wonderful day.